Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. As always, it's nice to see all your comments in the comment section below, but what I've noticed is that usually what happens within a month or so, there's a bunch of questions that get asked over and over and over again. So this is another Q&A, build feedback video type of thing. And then just having a chat with some of you who've had some good questions in the comment section below. So this is a little bit of a talking head video. So if you do want to watch this while you're driving, well, don't watch it while you're driving, just put it somewhere on the side or do something else while you just hear what's going on over here, then that's completely fine. That's exactly why I'm doing these. But if you do want to check some of those questions and parts on the screen as well, there's quite a few things to see on the screen as well. So let's go. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license use the same code tn20 to get a 30 percent off check out whokeys.com in the video description below first of all if you are thinking about building a pc at the moment is very good time to think about building a pc the parts are very good and we're kind of in the middle of like some new gpu cpu launches but we don't know what the heck's going to happen in it in like the sep september late summer time we don't know if we're going to have you know chip shortage again or if we're going to have some other shortage so if you've been holding out to kind of build a pc at the moment is quite a good time to do it just because there's availability and the prices are very good like the gpu prices have gone down so this has been kind of like a, a one of the questions i've i've seen quite a bit in the comment section below should i build now or should i wait till september i think if you're a creator and you know that you're gonna have profit from that pc build that you're going to be doing now or you're going to save time or it's going to be beneficial for your business to do it right now then just do it now if you can wait you can wait but often i find that those people will wait you know for the next launch but what if the next one is going to be even better it's like kind of like this never-ending process of just waiting waiting and waiting i'm going to leave a few pc builds in the description below best bang for buck 1000 $1,500, $2,500 and $5,000 build. And you can kind of configure them as well, like, you know, upgrade a little bit and go down. So it kind of fits all of the budgets. You can find them in the description below if you're interested. Anyway, this first uh, question is from Speaker Riot. And it's a little bit of a longer question. So we'll speed that up a little bit. Love your channel, fellow tech lover here. Hoping if you can check out my PC Pie Picker. I'm not sure about two things. I'm using a 12 nanometer K and I'm wondering if I can get by without having a dedicated GPU. As I'm not using the machine for any graphics creative work. Most so music production and hoping I can wait until the price levels out or a new series drops and still use the machine until then. I searched for a quiet case and chose the Fantex P600S. No window, but now I'm afraid my motherboard won't fit. Will my case and pros Asus Pro Z690 work together with the Noctua NHD15? Thanks in advance for the time, all your hard work, so people like myself don't have to waste money trying to figure out what they really need. So here's the part picker, as you can see. First of all, what I can see over here straight away is this Windows operating system. Windows 10 Pro OEM for $131. Please go check out the video sponsor earlier, what we just mentioned, and you can get this for like $20 or even less if you use the code that I've linked in the description below as well. Definitely, you're going to save $100 easily, over $100 you can put in your pocket. Next of all, the uh, power supply is pretty good. You have actually taken the um, Z690 builds that we did, but you went with the air cooling instead of uh, water cooling that we had over there. Now this Noctua NHD 15 is probably gonna run quite warm, quite hot um, inside the system. What I'd recommend you to do is go for something like the Arctic um, Liquid Freezer 2. Well at the moment the Arctic is quite expensive here at $150. Seems like um, it's gone quite popular. Usually you should be able to get that for I don't know 100 dollars or something like that a little bit like that but this is one of the aios to really like go for i can see this ek one here is quite quite good here that is a good aio here as well 110 dollars or something like that but that will just make your cpu run a little bit quieter just because the nhd 15 most likely is going to start to ramp up a little bit and you're going to hear it a little bit more especially if you are a music producer i recommend you go with this liquid cooler instead but if you're asking will this noctua fit inside the fantex eclipse uh, p600s case 
yes, it will absolutely fit in there. And can you just live without the GPU? Absolutely, you can as well. I do think that this iGPU inside there is well enough to just run your monitors, but most of your music production workflow will be on the CPU and RAM. So you'll absolutely, definitely can do that. Next question, Engit Data is saying, I have been following your YouTube channel for my next PC build. I hope you can help me out with the specifications that I am considering. Background, I am an architect and use a range of software for CAD presentation and 3D rendering. I use softwares like Autodesk AutoCAD, Autodesk Revit, Google SketchUp, Lumion, V-Ray, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom, Adobe InDesign. I'm self-employed professional and my priority is to give the best output to my clients in the most efficient time frame. So the budget is around $3,000 and here's a few options. Option one is 1200K, Asus BroArt Z690 Wi-Fi, Corsair Vengeance LPX 16 gigabytes, 3600, Samsung Drives 250 gigabytes and 500, NVIDIA RTX A4000, 60 gigabytes of that. Uh, Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, 360 millimeter. Corsair 5000D airflow case and Corsair 750 watt power supply. Option two, pretty much the same instead of the GPU. Where's the GPU? Okay, 3080 instead of A4000, but 3080 is like better in terms of computing. It's got more computing power. The A4000 is really RTX 3070. Okay, option three is 11900K. Option four is actually 11700K. Okay. So here's my thing. Option three and four, I wouldn't go with them at all just because it's 11th series and it's going to be more expensive to go with that and worse performance than like an i5 from 12th gen. Have a look at my i5 12600K review. It's an unbelievable CPU, like better that than the 11900K in almost every single way. So here's two options, 12700K on 12900K. First of all, your RAM is wrong over there. Uh, you can't run DDR4. I know this is DDR4 because there's no DDR5 that runs 3600 megahertz. So you need DDR5 for that motherboard. If you want DDR4 for your systems, I'm not sure how well, you know, the DDR4 or 5 uh, works with your 3D softwares over there, uh, like AutoCAD, Revit, Google SketchUp, and so on. I do think that DDR5 is gonna be a little bit more faster, but my question to you is, do you know if you need more or do you need actually just fast RAM? I can see that you have put 32 gigabytes, which isn't the most. So I'm guessing that you don't need a lot of RAM, but you need just fast RAM to kind of work with. This is just something to know about your software and know how your workflow works, because even in the same software, you can have a different workflow that uses up certain kind of a resource of your uh, computer system. Looking at your specification over here, I would go with, D uh, you know, obviously 32 gigabytes, but DDR5, because you can't go DDR4 with that motherboard. Now this Z690 Wi-Fi is a very good board, 12900K versus 12700K. Now this is something you'd really want to consider with your workflow and to know if you need that much like kind of CPU multi-core performance because the 12700K is unbelievable CPU. I don't know what you're running currently but this is better than the 5900X, most of the time even better than the 5950X from Ryzen. So it's a really good bang for buck what you can get over there and it doesn't run that hot. It runs about like 160 watts. You're not gonna have any problems cooling that down. You can even go with air cooling. It's no problem, but the Arctic liquid freezer is just gonna be very quiet and very good cooler. So what I would do is go with the 12700K and then go with the RTX 3080 because that has got more GPU power. It's got much more GPU calculating uh, power. Now you might be able to even get the 12 gigabyte version of this, which is just more VRAM kind of slightly faster in terms of the GPU, but really the same, but just to get more VRAM. So you're not so far off from the A4000, which has 16 gigabytes of uh, GDDR6. I don't think this is GDDR6X actually. So you're gonna have faster memory and a little bit more. Um, so I think overall that's gonna be a better option there. For the SSDs, I really recommend going with a little bit more than 256 gigabytes for your OS drive. Go with 500 gigabytes for your OS drive and then for your project drives. I know I'm pushing you to a little bit more expensive uh, build, but you'd probably be uh, even okay with a 280 millimeter AIO, not 360, because that 12700K will run completely fine on 280 as well. Might be a little bit like quieter even, because there's uh, 240 millimeter fans rather than 320 millimeter fans, but the performance will be really the same. You might be getting it a little bit cheaper. So that's what I would go for. If you go with a 3080, 
and 12700K, the 750 watts will be fine. I'd probably recommend going 850, a little bit more future proof, um, but that's that's really, really that what I'd, I'd recommend over here. For $3,000, you should easily be getting this system, what I recommended to you as well. So this next question is from, I think his name was Steven. He messaged me on Instagram, but basically this is the story. Hello, I'm from Norway, and thank you for a superb inspiring channel. Love your builds and your insight on how you explain them easy and understandable way. My situation, I'm working as a location scout for movies. What a cool job. My workflow includes both photos, 27 r 4 and video footage from Mavic 3 5K video. A Lenovo C930 laptop, laptop with 10 gigabyte Thunderbolt adapter and a NAS 10G issues. My laptop is way too slow for video editing. I need a dongle for LAN, enough, enough USB port and SD card reader. Love the portability and nice resolution of the laptop. I've been looking into a couple of scenarios and it would be nice to know more about my options as a creative. A laptop only, something like a Asus Pro Art 16 uh, that costs three to 5,000 will give the video capability on the road. road. Heavier, bulky computer to drag around everywhere. Bag is kind of heavy and drone cam lenses and so on as well. Then there's a desktop and laptop option. Go with the best words, have a decent and upgradable desktop for video that stays in the office and still keep the laptop for another year or two and replace it with a new ultra portable later. Will not give me video editing on the road, which is not strictly needed either, but less to drag around. Also, stop speeds with built-in Thunderbolt ports and 10 gigabit network performance. And what is interesting is, how would a mid-end desktop, like a 1500 to 2000 build holdup against the Asus Pro Ad 16 laptop or Intel Nook when it comes to performance? The Intel Nook you posted yesterday seems quite interesting as a desktop PC, and I guess it would perform even better than the 1500 to 2000 dollar PC built. Now, here's the thing. There's a very interesting kind of issue here because you kind of need portability and you need something to edit like a little bit of a powerhouse as well. So what I would go for is the desktop laptop route because for $1,500, you can get a really, really nice PC uh, that runs like pretty much anything on it. Like I highly recommend you go check out my $1,500 PC build. But now this is more like $1,200, $1,300 or even like close to $1,000, something like that. Because the prices have uh, like kind of gone down so much. So I highly recommend building something like that for that money. And that's going to be insane for you. Like a 12600K with RTX 3060 or 3060 uh, Ti, 3070 probably you can even afford for the same budget now. And that's going to be very powerful to run pretty much anything. Like Sometimes I prefer that even to my like workstation that's over there that's you know Ryzen 959 oh, sorry 3950X and RTX 3070 because the 12600K just with the iGPU it just plays back video footage so well it, it's just so nice and I know that he also didn't want to go with a Mac option but if you did like if you were okay with a Mac kind of a uh, laptop then the MacBook Airs with an M1 are just so cheap and so powerful really what you can drag around and it should be able to even play back that uh, Mavic 3 video if it is H.265, I'm not sure quite what codec you're running over there. In terms of the Asus ProArt laptop 16s, they are quite bulky as well to drag around. Now there is a new line of Asus laptops coming out and oh, I've got actually one over here. This is the 14 inch over here. I highly recommend go check out actually I think the unboxing of this comes out after this video, so you'll have to wait for that. Basically, it's an absolutely amazing laptop over here. Um, but basically, the 12th gen Intel laptops are completely another league compared to the 11th gen. So whenever you're looking for laptops, I don't think the Pro Ad 16 laptop has the 12th gen version out there yet. They're still selling the 11th gen. But now we have the ZenBooks and VivoBooks out that have 12th gen laptops with Intel processors and they're so much better. So if you do want to go that route, I would go with the 12th gen laptops from Asus. I would love to see the Pro Art like 12th gen come out, but probably they're going to come out with that later on in the year. And um, the Nook is a good performer as well. If you need the small like portable aspect of it, you know, if you need the, the PC to be small, but I do think like a 12600K with RTX 30, 60, 70, something like that, will still be a better and quieter and a little bit more performance option just because it's not so thermally limited. The look is a little bit thermally limited. And if you do need a little bit more power, then the full PC builds will be a little bit cheaper just because the Nook is so compact and you're paying for the design as well. So the Nook comes a little bit more expensive just if you look at that price point. If you do like the like SFF form factor, then absolutely the Nook is the one to go. So I hope this kind of helps you out. I think if you go with laptops, the, the Mac laptops are very good at playing back video, the M1s. Um, but if you just don't like the Mac OS, it's completely fine as well. I understand why you want to go Windows. But if you do want to go Windows, do go with the 12th gen laptop. Like the i7 inside here is much better than any of the 11th gen desktop processors. Like, let me tell you this much. This i7 12700H is better than 
the 11900K desktop processor that pulls 290 watts from the socket. It's ridiculous. So that's how much they have improved since 11th gen, uh, as you can see over there. I'll try to leave some stuff in the description below as well if you want to check them out. I'm Excel Power User 12700H is the right one to choose for me for this video. Um, absolutely. I'm using this here at the moment. It's absolutely amazing processor to go for. Just go for it. This is the $1,000 build. Someone's saying, great job explaining this project. I stare at my screen for hours. I buy and sell stocks all day, plus research stocks. That's a lot of text to read. And when you are on your watch, watch list, prices are constantly changing. So my question is, can you improve, improve on this? I don't know where to go. Better monitor, better memory, your better graphics card. Thanks, it advance. So if you are just looking at kind of videos and stocks and that, that doesn't really require quite a lot of power and this PC will be very very good if you go with the RTX 3050 that I have in there that will be well enough for you like completely fine you might want to now you probably can opt for the 12600k which improves your CPU power there and probably 32 gigabytes of RAM will be enough for you as well so if you go with that that will be like better so you don't need more uh, graphics card that will even if you run like four monitors on the RTX 3050 completely fine even if they're all 4, 4k it's enough for you do you need a better monitor I don't know which monitors you are using you probably want like a, if you're staring at your monitor all the time just get like a nice monitor to stare at probably something that's very pleasing to the eye a good resolution uh, maybe be a bigger size you don't really need any crazy color accuracy because that's not what you do probably over there so probably a little bit cpu memory i'd kind of opt that thanks mitch for your comment as someone said for the threadripper build we did for the 19 000 build threadripper 5000 just came out lol well actually that threadripper pro 5000 is only oem only at the moment so you can't really just go and DIY that. But if you do want to get the 5,000, you have to go and buy like a ready build system. That's why we didn't use that. So it's not available for us at the moment. Someone says for the same build, no DDR5 RAM. No, there's no Threadripper builds with DDR5 RAM. Even Intel Xeons aren't uh, DDR5 RAM. So the headed uh, CPUs aren't really DDR5 compatible yet. The 12700 versus 12700K video. Do you think the 12700K would definitely need a liquid cooler or would something like the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo work? No, you don't need a liquid cooler for the 12700K. And I do think most of the cases, the Hyper 212 Evo will do a good job. But I do want to recommend like a little bit of, uh, not like the budget budget end of the air cooler, but something in the middle, something like like Noctua NHU14, something like that, that's got a little bit more power to just cool it. It's just gonna, when you do a lot of rendering and like CPU intensive stuff, it's just a little bit better to cool it down. But I do think the Hyper 212 will work most, most of the cases, depends like what's your case in airflow and ambient temperature but it should be completely fine. My, I can see my 12700K pulls about 160 watts and it's it's not, not a problem to cool at all. Same video. Do I still get all this, this better performance if I put a 12700K in a B660 motherboard? I'm not interested in overclocking, but I'm wondering about all these differences you point out still apply on a B660. Anyone's input would be appreciated. So official loop pack, absolutely you don't need Z690. So the Z690 at B660, really the difference is overclocking clocking but also the chipset um, let's say bandwidth of transfer speeds if you look at the z690 there's more m.2 slots and probably better usb ports and so on but the b660 will still perform like exactly the same performance of the cpu unless you have a very bad vrm motherboard that that can't like you know really uh, deliver power to your cpu very well and there aren't that many out there but if you go with like a reputable brand like an msi b660 or asus um, depending which asus b660 you should be completely fine with the 12700k uh, even like the 12700k doesn't pull that much power so it's like you know 160 watts so i wouldn't really worry about that but yes you don't need z690 b660 will work exactly the same someone says it needs water cooling in the long run for that uh dollars thread per build but it absolutely it doesn't a lot of people think that if you've got a thread per cpu you need it to liquid cool it no you don't that Noctua NHU14, well, it's not S, you know, it's TR40 or SP3 cooler. It's got such a massive contact plate with the CPU, uh, IHS, 
so that all the heat is so easily transferable. So you can easily cool this. Uh, I'd, I'd only recommend get two fans just for the longevity. If you're doing like high long term renders, then just get two fans. It'll easily cool it. No need to that. I think water cooling is a little bit overrated. The air cooling is so good these days that if you take like a Nocto NHD15 and like a 360 millimeter AIO, they perform pretty much the same in terms of cooling capacity. Another question about the $1,000 PC build. I'm really struggling with my build. I can't afford more, but do I need it? I, my use is 4K editing in Resolve 18, Panasonic GH5S and iPhone 12 HDR. With color rate correction and not grading yet. I don't do much in terms of masks, but there may be some projects with tracking and attaching an image to it. Right now, I am on 2018 a Mac Mini i3, and the biggest issue is, is it lacks playback. The render times are long, but that is less of an issue. I'm also going to be streaming, and that raises the question if this motherboard's X16 will be reduced uh, for the GPU if I have a capture card in another slot and two one terabyte NVMEs, Samsung 980. Does any of that matter with this GPU build level great ears? And thanks for the input and appreciate it. Depend which GP GPU you're using, most likely you're going to be completely fine even running like your GPU at X8 slot because the top uh, slot of the PCA slot will go from X16 to X8 if you have like something else in the second slot. But I wouldn't really worry about it unless you go with like uh, RTX 3080 and above. I think RTX 3070 and below, you're gonna be fine. You're not really gonna see any drop in performance just because you're capping the bandwidth over there. If you're gonna update to that build from your 2018 Mac Mini i3, you're gonna see a huge performance improvement and you're gonna be absolutely amazed by the, by the actual, you know, performance of this you might be able to even get an rtx 3060 or 3060 ti now for the same price point so i would highly recommend doing that and highly would recommend go 32 gigabytes of ram not a lot more actually in resolve you might be better off going with rtx 3060 just because of the vram because uh, resolve uses vram more than ram in Premiere Pro, it uses RAM more and then less VRAM, but uh, Resolve likes to use a lot of video memory. Like as, as much as it can, it just uses the, the graphics card memory basically. But yeah, just that's what I would do. This uh, $5,000 Pro Ad build that we did, uh, does the cooler come with the LGA 17 mounting kit? It's not compatible by itself, right? Uh, it should come, but double check if it does. If it doesn't come, I'm sure Fantex will send you the 1700 mounting kit for free if you can prove your purchase. It should come. It depends like if it's been on the shelf for a long time since the launch of the 12th gen. But I think one of the newer ones or newer stock will have LGA 17 mounting kit uh, with the actual cooler as well. So Cookie Tech is saying, thank you for the nice video. Can you please do a budgeted two PC build on the 3K and 5K for multimedia editing? As always, I highly recommend you go check out the PC builds, 1,000, 1,500 and 2,500 PC builds in the uh, description below because you'll probably find your PC somewhere in that area at the moment. These are the best bang for buck builds. I'm going to explain like the upgrades, the downgrades, what if you need that and so on. You just have to go check them out and you can build them. David here is saying, Hi there, I'm about to buy a new workstation, but I can't decide which config would fit my needs. I need it for 3D modeling, simulations and rendering in Maya by Autodesk. I have a limit of about five and a half grand and I want to maximize the capabilities of the hardware part to have the best configuration I can afford that matches my needs. I tried seeking from, from various experts and articles and YouTube videos, but I can't decide whether Intel or AMD is better or which CPU GPU motherboard would work well together. I thought I might buy a pair of RTX 3080s, but at first I can only afford one and a few months later, another one. People say that AMD is better than Intel when it comes to rendering, but I need the whole work process to be as fast as possible. I personally find it unnecessary to have a really strong CPU when the GPU is already a bomb, although Arnold is unable to use GPU rendering. I would like the config to have a long life so it can reduce on the same level even after years and years of use. Whenever I find out the best CPU GPU uh, motherboard combo, I have to face the fact that I have to choose a well-behaving cooling system, but I am not sure if it has to be a unique air or water-based cooling system. Okay, basically what's uh, the best configuration? The first of all, I think Arnold now can support GPU rendering as well. Now, don't quote me on that, but I'm sure it does. Just double check that. I think the latest Arnold can do that as well. And in here, this AMD or Intel option. Yes, in a way, like CPU 3D rendering is better in AMD just because it has a lot of um, cash on the CPU. But at the same time, the single core speeds and the like, like Cinema 4D, for example, if you do a Cinema Chart 23 tests on 12700K on 12900K, they perform very, very well and better than the 5900X or 5950X. And they're a little bit cheaper as well. And at the same time, like kind of open you up to some future upgrade abilities as well because the AMD platform at the moment is dead. We have to wait for the next generation to come out until I can like um, comfortably recommend those as well. So what I would do is go with either 12700K or 12900K depending on your budget. I think 
5500 I think you can go with a 12900K. Uh, definitely liquid cooled for that, but AIO will be fine, 360 millimeter cooler. But just because the single core performance of those CPUs is so so good and so much better than the Ryzen one you probably are going to see like if you're working with the 3D modeling and stuff um, and you're not rendering this you might not need that big of uh, uh, like a like a GPU rendering power but rather than just like fast working which the Intel CPUs are absolutely brilliant at doing so we'd go with that I'd very much check out the Asus Pro at Z690 build that I have done I'll leave it in the description as well that should be roughly about five grand maybe a little bit less uh, and that comes with an RTX 3090. Now, 3090s are really, really good at the moment, and the price have gone down so much that you should be getting that. And the 24 gigabytes of VRAM will be like very, very good for you. So, if you do any of that, I think go with that type of build. That's what I would do. So, the in terms of the motherboard, just see like what features do you need. Do you need a lot of like Thunderbolt ports? Do you need a lot of fast USB ports? Do you need 10 gigabit Ethernet? Do you need all that sort of jazz? So you might want to downgrade a little bit on the motherboard if you go with my Z690 Pro Art build. But at the same time, the Asus Z690 Pro Art build is like one of the best creative builds out there. That's, I hope this helps your situation. But I do think like a 12900K, for example, with an RTX 3090 and some DDR5 RAM there, you should be in a really good position to do some really good work. So here's uh, another question that I get. I recently upgraded my PC to 1200K RTX 3090, but I can't get the iGPU to be used at all. I'm not 99% sure it's enabled on my MSI motherboard. I've downloaded and installed the QuickSync or Intel drivers, um, and I've enabled the iGPU in DaVinci Resolve. It still stays at 0%. I just tried plugging my second monitor into the motherboard, and the monitor isn't getting a feed. However, plugging it into the motherboard works fine. I guess GPU is what it means here. When I didn't have my GPU installed, any ideas so basically if you do want to see your igpu used the thing is if you expect it to be used all the time you're not going to see that the igpu really will kick in only when it finds something that it can do otherwise it's just going to let the dedicated gpu do it that's how it works in premiere pro now davinci resolve recently i've seen some updates and i think there is a little bit of a bug there actually because it can only utilize one it's not so good at switching anymore between like igpu and dedicated gpu encoding and decoding when it comes to to that uh, I've, I've seen a few com comments about that and then i tried myself as well but basically if you do want to see uh, the igpu encoders or media engines being used just untick the video decode from the nvenc or nvidia there if you untick that it only uses the igpu and then like kind of dedicated gpu for all the other stuff go with that and um, so basically if you already see it on the task manager there's a few important bits that he has already done make sure it's turned on on the uh, in the bios which he has if you see it on the task manager it's already on and then secondly install the intel like graphics drivers or basically download the intel um, support assistant and it will just download all the drivers or keep your system up to date with the drivers and then you should be able to already see that but don't expect the igpu to do everything all the time it will only use it when it finds some codecs to do great channel thank you for great reviews and helpful information now the question i'm building a system for amateur photo editing and light video editing the most important for me is photo editing process and the budget or the exporting is less interesting 12600k arctic freezer esports 2 or 2 32 gigabytes of ram i'm thinking to buy the asus prime b60 plus lga ddr4 is it good enough if i want to upgrade to a better cpu in the future or is it better to go with the z690 aero what's the lowest card you recommend to save some cash same question about as the gpu so what ssd 600 watt, I want a system that will work fine in the coming years and I can upgrade it if you need some more juice. So I highly recommend you go check out the $1,500 build again in the comment section below that we've used already in there. I would go with the Z690 Aero um, just because if you want to upgrade in the future, it's got better VRMs and better power delivery. So you're a little bit more future proof and you've got much more SSDs in there. In terms of the SSDs, I highly recommend you go check out uh, that video uh, there as well because I recommend lots of different SSDs and budget SSDs and so on. But at the same time, the GPU, don't go with the RTX 3060. You're a photographer, 3050 is well enough for you. So you should be able to get it for about $330 or something like that. And that's way enough for you. So my friends, hopefully this was helpful to you and you got some helpful information. As always, if you do have any other questions or you would like your comment to be featured in the future Q&A episodes or just a build back for your feed, oh, build feedback then leave your pc part picker or your build or your ideas in the comment section below there tell me what you planning to use this for what's your spec list what you're planning what's your budget tell me what you plan to do with this and then hopefully i can help you with 
like some of my ideas here. Any comments, let me know in the comment section below. As always, I'll leave some stuff in the description below if you want to check them out and some videos helpful other things to check out if you're doing a build. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.